John and Jane. John and Jane are related to each other. In fact, they are brother and sister. Not only are they brother and sister, but they are also twins. Their mother gave birth to them only a few minutes apart. I first met John and Jane when we were only five years old. We went to kindergarten classes at the same school. Because the house where John and Jane lived was close to my family's house, I often walked to school with John and Jane. When we weren't at school, John and Jane and I often played together. Sometimes we would play sports and games. Sometimes we would play in the forest looking for birds and animals. On rainy days, we would stay inside and play with toys and dolls. On warm summer days, we would go swimming in the lake that was near the place where we lived. I often visited John and Jane at their house. On many occasions, I had lunch at their place. John and Jane's parents were very nice to me. Of course, John and Jane often visited my house too. My parents enjoyed it when John and Jane came over for lunch. When I became older, I remained friends with John and Jane. Sometimes we would study or do our school homework together. Sometimes we worked at the same part time jobs to make extra money. We often helped each other in various ways. Sometimes I did a favor to help John or Jane, and sometimes they did favors to help me. Eventually, when we grew up, I moved to a different town. Both John and Jane also moved to different places, but I am still good friends with John and Jane. Two years ago, I went to Jane's wedding, and last year, I went to John's wedding. I think I will probably always be friends with John and Jane. Having friends is very nice. I am very lucky to have had good friends such as John and Jane. Hobbies. Hobbies are activities that people do in their spare time for the sake of enjoyment. A hobby usually involves work of some kind, but the work is fun for the person who does it. Some people enjoy their hobbies very much and like to spend much time on those hobbies. There are many different hobbies that people enjoy. One of the most popular hobbies is gardening. Many people enjoy growing beautiful flowers or tasty vegetables in a garden near their house or apartment. People who have a garden enjoy seeing the results of their work when flowers show their bright, beautiful colors. But gardeners also enjoy the tasks of gardening itself. They like to work in the soil, planting and watering their flowers. Another popular hobby is photography. Some people enjoy taking pictures of the people and places around them. People who enjoy photography may sometimes buy expensive cameras that allow interesting photographs to be taken. But even people who have only a basic camera can still take beautiful pictures. For many people, car repair is a favorite hobby. Some people enjoy looking at the engine and other parts of their cars. Those people make repairs or improvements to their cars. Of course, this is a useful hobby, but many people enjoy fixing up a car simply because they enjoy working with cars. Some people collect objects as a hobby. For example, some people collect postage stamps and some people collect coins. It can be very satisfying to find the missing parts of one's collection. Especially when the stamps or coins are very rare. Of course, these are just a few of the many hobbies that people enjoy. Do you have any hobbies that you enjoy? Life in outer space? People have often wondered about whether or not there is life beyond the planet Earth. For years, the idea of intelligent life on other planets has been very popular. Many books and movies tell stories of what those forms of life might be like. Many scientists believe that very simple forms of life are likely to exist on many other planets. Under the right conditions, simple life forms might arise. Those conditions, which include moisture and warmth, might occur in many parts of the universe. 
Fewer scientists believe that very intelligent forms of life are likely to exist on many other planets. For intelligent life to evolve, a very long period of time is needed. During that time, the conditions on a planet must not be too harsh. Otherwise, the evolving life forms will die. The amount of water, heat, and various chemicals must be just right. If not, then complex life might never evolve. The conditions needed for intelligent life to evolve are very unlikely to occur on any one planet. However, some scientists believe that intelligent life might be common in the universe. Because there are so many stars and planets in the universe, there might be a few places that have intelligent life. However, those places are probably very, very far away. Other scientists disagree. They think that the conditions needed for intelligent life are extremely rare. Because of this, our planet might be the only place that has intelligent life. So far, it is impossible to know whether or not there are intelligent beings on other planets. But even if those beings do exist, it seems very unlikely that we will ever meet them. Reading the Newspaper I often enjoy reading the newspaper. In my city, there are three different newspapers, and I look at different newspapers on different days. I find that each section of a newspaper has some interesting information. Most newspapers contain several sections that can be easily removed from the rest of the newspaper. The main section is found at the front of the newspaper. This section usually contains the most important news from around the world, from around the nation, and from the local area. Sometimes the main section also includes some pages that contain opinions about the news. The editors of the newspaper write an editorial opinion. Other writers provide many different opinions about current events. Also, some readers of the newspaper write letters to the editor in which they express their opinions. Another popular section of the newspaper is the sports section. This section contains information about many different sports events. The sports section provides scores and results from many games and competitions. Another section of the newspaper contains information about entertainment and the arts. The arts and entertainment section tells readers about new movies and plays. It also describes new books, music concerts, and art exhibits. Most newspapers also have a business section. This section provides information about new business deals and about the stock market. Many people read the business section of the newspaper to gain information and advice about investing their money. Finally, newspapers usually have a section for classified advertisements. This section allows people to advertise about things they want to buy or sell. It also gives notices about job openings. Reading the newspaper is surely a good way to keep informed about many different events in the world around us. Summer Jobs In North America, many young people attend high school, college, or university. But during the summer months, most of those students work at a summer job. For most students, there are no classes during the months of July and August, and sometimes none in May and June also. Having a summer job allows students to make money that they will need during the rest of the year. They need this money because it costs a lot of money to pay for university or college. Of course, students also want money to spend on things that are fun also. Many students have summer jobs that involve working with children. For example, some students work at children's camps where they teach children various skills and games. Some students work as lifeguards at swimming pools and at beaches. Some students do heavy work in their summer jobs. For example, some students find jobs as construction workers other students work in factories and some students work on farms. There are other students who find jobs mowing lawns or collecting trash. Quite a few students work in stores. Some of these students have jobs as cashiers and some have jobs putting products on store shelves. Other students work in restaurants as waiters or as cooks. Other students work in offices. Some of them work as assistants for other employees. Their tasks might include typing letters, programming computers, or delivering mail. Some students enjoy their summer jobs very much, and they find those jobs to be a pleasant break from studying. Other students do not really enjoy summer jobs, but find their jobs to be a nice way to make new friends. But nearly all students who have summer jobs are pleased to have the chance to earn some extra money. 
Eating out. Many people enjoy the experience of going out to eat at a restaurant. It is enjoyable to eat one's favorite foods or to try some entirely new food. Going out to a restaurant is also fun because it allows a change from the usual routine of eating at home. There are many different kinds of restaurants. One popular type of restaurant is the fast food restaurant. When ordering fast food, you must first wait in line at the front of the restaurant and then order food from the counter. After paying, the food is quickly delivered and you can then take the food to a table where you can enjoy your meal. In most restaurants, you don't have to go to a counter to order your food. Instead, you are taken to a table soon after entering the restaurant. There, a waiter comes to give you a menu. You can choose your meal from the foods that are listed on the menu. After ordering, it takes some time to prepare your food. After a while, the waiter brings your meal to the table. When you are finished eating, the waiter brings the bill or check. You then pay for the meal and leave some extra money as a tip for the waiter. In some restaurants, the waiter does not bring the meal to your table. Instead, after you are taken to a table, you then go to a counter called a buffet. There you can select different types of foods, such as salads, soups, meats, breads, vegetables, and desserts. After putting the food on your plate, you return to your table. After eating, you can return to the buffet to get more food. Other restaurants can be very fancy. They may have beautiful decorations, and they may have food that is prepared by expert chefs. These restaurants may also serve fine wines with the food. Of course, these restaurants are very expensive. At these restaurants, it is often necessary to reserve a table by telephoning the restaurant in advance. Different restaurants specialize in different kinds of food. Fast food restaurants may specialize in hamburgers or chicken. Some restaurants specialize in steak or seafood. Other restaurants specialize in foods that belong to a certain nationality. For example, many restaurants specialize in Italian, Mexican, Chinese, Indian, or Thai food. Eating out at a restaurant can be a fun and tasty experience. What is your favorite kind of restaurant? Radio stations. When I drive in my car, I like to turn on the radio. By listening to the radio, I can enjoy music and learn the latest news while I am traveling from one place to another. Of course, you can also listen to the radio at home or even at work. Listening to the radio is a popular activity for many people, and each city has many different radio stations. There are many different kinds of radio stations. Some radio stations provide news and information. Other radio stations have a talk format, where listeners can call the radio station's experts to discuss political affairs or to ask for personal advice. Although there are many radio stations that provide news and opinions, most radio stations are mainly devoted to playing music of some kind. For example, some radio stations play the songs that are currently most popular, often called the top 40 songs. Other radio stations specialize in particular types of music. There are some stations that play only classical music. Other radio stations mainly play jazz music. Some very popular radio stations play hard rock music. Others specialize in country music. Some people prefer radio stations that play rhythm and blues music. Still other people enjoy radio stations that specialize in soft, easy listening music. If you have a favorite kind of music, or even if you like to listen to all kinds of music, you can probably find at least one radio station that you will like. In addition to news and music, some radio stations provide other kinds of entertainment. Sometimes, a story from a book will be told over the radio. Occasionally, the words of a theatrical play may be heard on the radio. Even in the age of television and computers, the radio has remained an important source of entertainment and information. People will surely listen to the radio for a long time to come.
Being a good citizen. Every society has laws that regulate the way people behave. A good citizen should obey laws. However, there is more to being a good citizen than merely obeying laws. There are many other things that people can do to make their society a pleasant one for every person. One way to be a good citizen is to be polite in everyday activities. For example, when passing through a door, a considerate person will hold the door open for a person who is close behind. Holding doors open is especially important when someone is carrying a heavy load. Being a good citizen is very important when traveling on the roads and streets. Pedestrians, bicyclists, and car drivers should all follow the rules of the road. Bicyclists should yield to pedestrians, and car drivers should yield to both bicyclists and pedestrians. Drivers should also allow other drivers to merge into their lanes. Also, drivers should avoid honking their horns except when this is necessary. A good citizen will also avoid doing things that interfere with others. For example, a considerate person does not smoke cigarettes in areas where this might irritate others. Also, a polite person avoids playing music so loudly that other people will be annoyed. And of course, a good citizen avoids littering or making a mess. Other ways of being a good citizen involve greater effort. Some people serve their community by doing volunteer work of some kind. Other people help by donating money to a charity. Another way to serve the community is to donate blood. Blood donors are needed so that there will be enough blood available to help people who are sick or injured. Being a good citizen is very helpful for the community, and it also gives a feeling of satisfaction and pride. Visiting the doctor. When people feel sick, they go to a doctor. But sometimes people visit the doctor even when they are not sick. Doctors can perform a medical checkup to find out if a person is healthy. By performing this physical examination, the doctor can identify any health problems that might be developing. During a checkup, the doctor examines your eyes, ears, and throat. The doctor uses a small flashlight to examine the eyes, ears, and throat. It is important to make sure that the eyes react normally to changes in light. It is also important to make sure that the ears and throat have a normal appearance. When the doctor examines your throat, he or she will ask you to open your mouth wide and say, ah. The doctor uses a stethoscope to examine the patient's heartbeat. The stethoscope hangs around the doctor's neck. By using a stethoscope, a doctor can hear the patient's heartbeat very clearly. While checking the patient's heart, the doctor also listens carefully to make sure that the patient's breathing is normal. The doctor also checks the patient's blood pressure. Blood pressure is measured by placing a cuff around the arm. Air is then pumped into the cuff, and this allows blood pressure to be measured. Having very high blood pressure or very low blood pressure is not good for one's health. It is better to be in between. Another part of the examination is a test of the reflexes. The doctor tests the patient's reflexes by gently hitting his or her knee with a small hammer. If a person has normal reflexes, the leg will extend suddenly. Sometimes a doctor may give injections using a needle as an extra part of the checkup. These injections, called vaccinations, prevent the patient from developing certain illnesses. Medical checkups can help to maintain health but people should also maintain their health by leading a healthy lifestyle. A small town. I grew up in a small town. There were only about 2,000 people who lived in the town where I grew up. When a town is very small, it is also called a village. My village was surrounded by many farms and many lakes. The house where my family lived was near the middle of the town. On the streets where we lived, most of the houses were similar in size, but many of them had different shapes and different colors. Each house was surrounded by a yard where people grew their lawn and their garden. Often, I would walk from my house to the downtown part of the village. Downtown is the area where the stores and shops of a town are located. 
Because I lived in a small town, it was a short walk to the downtown area. Along the main street, there are several different kinds of stores. Some stores sold food, some stores sold clothing, and some stores sold hardware or building supplies. It was also a short walk to the schools in my town. When I went to elementary school, it would take about 10 minutes to walk to the school. Some of my friends lived on the same street where I lived. Sometimes we walked to school together. During the summer months, many people came from the big city to visit our village. The people liked to get away from the busy streets of the city. They enjoyed the quietness and the slow pace of village life. They also liked to spend their vacations near the lakes that were near the village. People from the city often said that people who live in villages seem very friendly. When I grew up, I left my village and I went to work in a larger town. But sometimes, I like to go back and visit the place where I grew up. Personal Computers During the 1980s and 1990s, personal computers became very widespread. The use of the computer has changed people's lifestyles in several ways. Before 1980, hardly anyone owned a computer. Only governments and large companies had computers. But throughout the 1980s and 1990s, computers became much cheaper, faster, and smaller, and they held much more memory. More and more people were able to afford to buy a computer. By the year 2000, computers had become very common. For many people, the personal computer is used mainly for performing calculations and for word processing. For example, people can calculate their finances on the computer. They can also use the computer to type their written documents, such as essays or letters. Many people enjoy playing games on their computers. Some people like to play chess or checkers on their computer. Other people prefer games that require fast reflexes and fine coordination. Computer games were very simple during the early days of the 1980s. Today's computer games show detailed images and sounds. Another very popular use of computers involves communication. Many people keep in touch with their friends and relatives by using electronic mail or email. Email allows people to send letters instantly to people far away. It is even possible to attach pictures to one's email messages. Many people also like to use their computer to gain information on the Internet. The Internet is a vast network of electronic pages where people can find information on many different topics. For example, people can read newspapers and magazines on the Internet. Personal computers have only existed for a short time. But for many people, those computers have quickly become a very useful part of everyday life. Methods of Transportation In the modern age, people often travel long distances. Sometimes people travel for reasons related to their work. Sometimes they travel as tourists. And sometimes people travel to visit relatives and friends. There are many different ways that people can travel. Some forms of transportation move people along the ground. Other methods of transportation move people across the water or through the air. Airplanes provide the fastest method of traveling. Modern jet airliners travel at about 1,000 kilometers per hour. These airplanes cruise through the skies almost 10 kilometers above the level of the sea. Jet airplanes allow people to travel great distances in a short time. For example, it is possible to fly across a great ocean such as the Pacific or the Atlantic in several hours. Ships were once the only way to travel across the oceans. Before airplanes, it took many weeks or months to travel around the world. Today, many people still travel by ship when crossing smaller bodies of water. Some ships, called ferries, allow people to bring their cars with them onto the ship. Some people also like to travel by ship as part of a holiday. These holiday ships, called cruise ships, stop in several interesting ports along the voyage. Trains are very popular in many places. In some places, such as Japan and France, 
trains travel at high speeds of about 300 kilometers per hour. These trains move people throughout the country very quickly and efficiently. Trains are also used to move people over short distances, such as the trip from one's home to one's workplace. Buses and cars are also widely used for transportation. Some people travel by bus or car for only short trips, but sometimes buses and cars are used for very long journeys. In North America, many people have driven across Canada or the United States in their cars. The wide, smooth roads allow cars and buses to travel quickly from one place to another. There are many different methods of transportation. Which one do you think is the best? A life experience. My friend Lanny and I went to Burger King yesterday. We ordered a big order of french fries and a couple of drinks. Lanny got a strawberry milkshake. I picked out a table near the window so we could look at the people passing by. As we were sitting there we heard our favorite song, Butterfly, by the band Crazy Town come on the radio. We looked at each other with big grins on our faces and started singing and dancing. It was great fun. Many people began staring at us, wondering why we were so happy. We didn't care. We just kept on moving and enjoying ourselves. The song ended and we were almost finished our food. We sat and talked about what was happening in our lives. She had just bought four new t-shirts for the summer. The new sandals she had gotten for her birthday had given her really bad blisters on the sides of her feet. When she wore other shoes, she had to wear band-aids on the blisters. I told her that I had bought four new CDs. I love music. As we finished our conversation, we finished off our drinks. I like going out with Lanny and talking. Lanny is my best friend and I can talk to her about anything. I am glad I have her to share my life with, even if it is as simple as going to Burger King and eating french fries. Lanny and I are planning to travel together, so we are trying to save our money. Our french fries and drink only came to about six dollars, so we didn't feel too bad about spending our money. I wonder, though, if McDonald's would have been cheaper. Airplane Ride Tasha signed a piece of paper which gave her a chance to win a free airplane ride. She put her name, address, and telephone number on that piece of paper. A few days later she got a telephone call. It was the man that was holding the ticket draw. Tasha didn't think she would win, but the man on the telephone said she did. She listened as the man told her where she would have to go to get her free airplane ride. She had to go near the town of Grimsby. She was allowed to pick a friend to go with her on the airplane ride. Tasha was so happy. She asked her twin sister Tanya to go with her. Tanya was very excited. Neither of them had been on an airplane before. When they got to the airplane center, Tasha and Tanya were nervous. They knew the airplane was small, so that meant only the pilot and them were going to be in the plane. Their mom took a picture of them beside the plane before they left. Tasha and Tanya hopped into the plane. They put their seatbelts on and got ready for takeoff. Tasha got to sit in the very front right beside the pilot. Tanya sat behind Tasha. The girls laughed nervously as the plane started rolling down the runway. They went faster and faster, trees passing by quickly. There was a powerful surge making everyone's head jerk back. The plane started lifting off the ground. Up, up, and away! They were up off the ground and flying high in the sky. It seemed as though they could get anywhere within a matter of seconds. They flew from Grimsby to Beamsville where they saw their high school, then on to St. Catharines and then Niagara Falls. They even flew over top of their house. They took pictures of their house. They could see their pond from way up there too. The pilot asked Tasha if she wanted to fly the plane. Sure, Tasha said. So Tasha took the steering handle and began to fly the plane. She didn't really know how to fly it, so when she pulled the handle down, the plane shot upward. Both of the girls squealed. Tasha leveled the plane and flew smoothly from then on. Soon it was time to go back to Grimsby. The pilot took over again. 
We braced ourselves as the landing strip got nearer. The landing went smoothly with Tasha and Tanya beaming as they looked out at the ground. They hopped off of the plane, thanked the pilot, and ran to tell their mum about their wonderful experience.